Give me some directions. Sure, where to? <clears throat> My kid brother got his bike stolen, and uh, I'd like to know where to report it. Detective Bureau, second floor. Thank you, thank you very much. It's not exactly front page news, Webster. Yeah, but it's a uh, suit like regular people wear. Well, I mean, uh, civilians. Gillis, I don't want to shake you up, but I am a regular person. And it just so happens that I'm the second guest on the feedback talk show tonight in an effort to publicize the new program which brought you rookies into the department. Any other questions? Mm, have a good time, Lieutenant. So, can't miss this. Show goes on soon. How much time do we have? Well, show goes on at 11.30, but Riker isn't the first guest. So as long as we get there by 12 or so, we ought to catch him. Riker and the two. A star is born. Yeah. Hey, when you go on television, uh, don't you have to wear makeup or something? Yeah, that's what I hear. I sure wouldn't like to be that guy that comes after Riker with a powder puff. He'd read him his rights. You have the right to remain silent, but you do not. Do not have the right to come after me with that powder puff. I think I'll rip him about it tomorrow. I said to see such suicidal thoughts in the very young. Well, he can't get mad at me for putting him on a little, can he? He can and will. No, not Lieutenant Riker. Not old heart lead Riker. Lieutenant, you say there's a concerted effort being made to improve police-community relations. Any concrete evidence of that? No miracles. There has been progress, I'd say. I haven't been a television host as long as I've been a columnist, but I have been on long enough to hear a lot of guests who didn't exactly have nice things to say about the police. Well, there's a lot of legitimate criticism for people to have. That's why we're trying to improve things. And why the force is trying to develop a new kind of cop. What we are trying to work on, Mr. Evans, is a police officer who is involved in his work, who does more than just arrest and testify. Don't give me these slogans, Lieutenant. What I'm saying is that a response from the 1930s isn't adequate for the 70s. Any more than newspaper thinking applies to television journalism, I'm sure you... You know, I think Riker handled himself pretty well last night. Hey, uh, Terry, you see my handcuffs anywhere? Try looking at your belt, Officer Gillis. That's where they're usually attached. What did Joe think? She dug it. Hey, has anyone seen my handcuffs? <laughs> you know, they're mornings with you. Times that I'm not really sure we're police officers. Members of the uh, Seven Dwarfs, maybe, but not police. Hey, is it true that uh, Lieutenant Monroe's going to ride with you two today? Unfortunately, yes. Riker was so gung-ho last night that Monroe said it sounded like something internal affairs should look into. So he has to go on a patrol to see how we interact with the community. Yeah, and we're the lucky interactors who got chosen. Oh, come on, you're kidding. What's missing now? My hat. Here's yeah. his hat. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to figure out which one of the dwarfs he is. I don't know, really, my hat's gone. It's not here. <laughs> there, you can take my spare. We'll check with the custodian in the morning. Come on, we're late. Okay. Yeah, I'm a 
to say I don't know much about you new cops. The way Riker went on and on about you on TV last night, I just had to see for myself. I mean, I figure, you know, you two guys must have a nice big red S across your chest. First heavy phone call comes in, you go racing for a phone booth to change your outfits, you know? Well, if you've got any questions, anything you'd like to learn, please feel free to ask. There's not much you can teach me, Officer Webster. No? Then how come you're riding with us? Because some of the people in internal affairs are getting a little bit worried over the fact that uh, we may have created a problem with all this new cop nonsense. Well, what kind of a problem, Lieutenant? A problem concerning an elite corps on the force. Some young cops thinking they know all the answers. Thinking they're better than men who've been on the force for 20 years. That's what kind of a problem. Then you don't agree with the program? Well, it doesn't matter whether I agree or not. I wasn't consulted. Mind if you had been? Well, I would have told them they're getting all hot and bothered because people don't like cops. So what? Who said people are supposed to like cops? Nobody likes anybody with power. And cops have the power. So nobody's going to like cops, and that's all there is to it. Maybe you're right, Lieutenant. That guy who ran that stop sign up there isn't going to like us at all. Mind sitting back and fastening your seatbelt, Lieutenant? Sake. I'm just reaching for my license. All right, but do it slowly, please. Now, you don't have to do that. I haven't got a weapon or anything back there. I'm just checking, sir. Listen, I'm sorry. I know I've got a bad temper, but I've been running late all day long. It's put me in an awful mood. Well, I'm afraid that your mood isn't going to get any better, sir. Oh, for Pete's sake. I was just hurrying, that's all. Listen. I've got a sales meeting, you understand? And it's essential that I get there on time. Now, it's just a chance I still might get there on time. Mr. Menzies, you're under arrest. Now, wait a minute. You have the right to remain silent. Wait, you don't understand. All I understand, sir, is that it's not worth it. But that's all I've got on me. The car's clean, Terry. Read him his rights, Willie. Sir, you, uh... You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You blew it, Webster, higher than a kite. I don't know what you're talking about, Lieutenant. What's the matter? Well, let's put it this way. Lieutenant Monroe was very impressed today until he decided he just couldn't go for soliciting a bribe. Soliciting a bribe? Terry didn't solicit a bribe. He arrested the guy for offering one. And Lieutenant Monroe thought it might be because he didn't offer you enough. You told the man it wasn't worth it. I meant it wasn't worth 20 or 20,000. What you said was it wasn't worth letting him go, not for 20 bucks. And that means that I was trying to raise the ante with Monroe right there? Now, listen to me, both of you, your police officers. If Lieutenant Monroe had to think twice before he was sure what you meant, what about the man you arrested? What's he thinking now? He's thinking I might have sprung him for 50. Right. And in print in Monroe's report, you know how that's going to look, too. Like I did try to solicit a bribe. Well, he's not going to put it in his report. Because I asked him not to, because I pointed out your inexperience to him, and because Lieutenant Monroe and I go back a long, long way. Lieutenant, I don't need any special treatment. Let the man ride what he saw. Ah, look, Webster, I don't want to lose public support for what we're trying to do here, and I don't want to have to suspend you, which could have happened if this got blown up all out of proportion. So get out of here, will you? I got some work to do. Sorry, officer. What can I do for you? Well, I'll tell you what I wish you could do for me. I wish you could give me a drink. I'm on duty. <laughs> things are tough all over, huh? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I think things are going to get a lot tougher. I don't follow you. Oh, I mean, I'm new on this beat. I know a lot of ways a bar can be closed. Uh, fire laws just a little bit ignored. 
What are you talking about? What I'm talking about is, uh, a man could get into a lot of trouble unless he's got help. The right kind of help, you know. What I mean is, I can make sure you're not violating just the littlest ordinance, then he can stay open. You want to stay open, don't you? I want to stay open. I don't suppose all this uh, special service comes for free, though, uh, does it? I'm sure we could work something out. Ben. Name's Ben. Ben, nice to meet you, Ben. Officer Terry Webster. I don't know what you're going to do about it. Probably nothing, because all you cops stick together. But just in case there's one of you guys who isn't on the take, I'm telling you, the guy's name is Terry Webster, and he's making me pay protection, or he shuts me down. Unsigned. We got the letter yesterday. And since Terry Webster is one of your boys, I thought you ought to know. Why wouldn't a man sign his name? Well, he's scared. Look, all we know is that he runs a bar, and that he's not too happy about having a new partner from the SCPD. This letter's a phony, Sam. Webster wouldn't do something like this. Well, we'll find out. We got a tail on him already. You put a tail on Webster without even talking to me first? We have to move, Eddie. You know that. Oh, well, then this is just a courtesy call. You're not giving me a chance to straighten out my own department. It's not your job to straighten things out. It's mine. Internal affairs, remember? This is different. Eddie, it's possible, just possible, we may have a bad cop. Now, will you give me that much? Sam, right now, I wouldn't give you an ice cube if your tongue was on fire. You can spend a week tailing him, you can spend a month you can spend your career on it if you want to. The kid is clean. Yes, just a minute. Sam. To you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll be right there. I'm sorry, Eddie. I just got another report. About Webster? No. About a guy named Ellison. But he's out of Webster's academy class. The class you were in charge of, Eddie. You? Yeah, it's me, Pop. Well, come on over and sit down for crying out loud and tell an old codger what's going on out there, huh? <laughs> yeah, you go with that old codger stuff again, Pop. You know, the youngest old codger I've ever seen. <laughs> Ought to be back in uniform, right? Yeah, yeah, I work in double shifts. <laughs> well, you just have a talk with Commissioner Tyler and set it up. You just tell him that Joe Richardson is ready, willing, and Tyler's able. Tyler's not commissioner anymore. Of course, I'd shave, and I'd probably still fit into my uniform. Yeah, I'll bet you could. Well, any news? Uh, what exciting assignments have they had you on this month? Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, huh? I, well, um, I got me a bank robber, Bob. A bank robber? Yeah. Oh, no joke now. No, no, a joke. Uh, uh, fellas think I might get a commendation. Did you shoot him? No, no, I brought him down in a foot pursuit, Pa. Oh, you cops today afraid to use your guns. Well, I'd have just... A commendation? <laughs> what do you know about that? Well, I was on the force three years before I got a commendation. I swear you're gonna put me and your brothers to shame you are. You're gonna be the best one in the family, you little runt. <laughs> Thank you, Pop. <laughs> well, any other news? What's new about the war? War? 
Well, yes, your Uncle Billy is still over there on Iwo Jima. Don't forget about that. No news, Pat. Well, I uh, guess I'm getting all hit up about nothing. Your Uncle Billy could always take care of himself. He'll be just fine. You'll see. Pop, I, uh, I gotta get back on duty. I'll come back next week, all right? Oh, well, sure, sure. Okay, fine. I appreciate your taking the time. But a lot of people out here got nobody. I got you. I know how hard it is to get off duty. Don't you think I don't? I... Not either. I love you, Pop. <sighs> what kind of a thing is that for a grown man to say to another grown man? You get the horse laugh. We heard you talk like that on the force. I'm your father, little runt. Don't you tell me that you love me. You tell me that you respect me. Got that? That's what's important. <laughs> still there. What car? The same one we kept seeing all last night before we got back to the station. That's a public street. No, Willie, this car was everywhere we went. One, two, three blocks behind us, but always there. Hey, you're just paranoid. Why would anyone want to follow us? I don't know. But I know one way to find out. How? By finding out if he's after you, me, or us. You head for the corner and I'll take the car. Okay. it about. Fahey uh, is checking me out. I want to know why. Internal Affairs is checking you out. It's for a good reason. What is the reason? Ask Lieutenant Monroe. But I haven't done anything. Oh, well, now, that's very moving. You've got me convinced. Call Monroe's boys off. I haven't got the authority. Lieutenant, you just got to get them Officer off. Officer Webster, you listen to me. We're in trouble here, lots of it. You're not the only one involved. There are other reports, other names. Well, whoever gave you mine is a liar. In that case, Lieutenant Monroe will dig that out. Lieutenant, I didn't join the force to get hassled to give up my rights. Is that what it looks like we're doing, taking away your rights? I want to talk to my accuser. No. So all those fine phrases you handed out of the police academy was just so much mealy mouth pap, right? No, Officer Webster, that is not right. I think you better cool off at home. Home? Just give me your shield. You're relieved from duty for a couple of days. 
One of my men does not go out in the street not feeling the way you do. Webster? Riker. Riker? Listen, Lieutenant, I think we better have a talk about those misfits you've been nursemating. Who is this? I can quote every section of the criminal code your boys been violating. You want to hear some numbers? You sound like a police officer. I'm someone who wants to catch criminals the way cops are supposed to, not just be concerned about them. Now, if you'll meet me tonight, I'll give you all the evidence you need. Names, dates, amounts, and proof. Ironclad proof, Lieutenant. All right. Where will you be? Lieutenant, you're all right, but you shouldn't talk. Get Sam and Roe in here, will you? I'm sorry, I can't, Lieutenant. It's time for your sedation. This is Thaco. Jill, I don't want any sedation. I want to talk to Sam and Roe. All right, Lieutenant, you can see him for just one minute. Then you're shot. He's awake. You can see him for a minute now. Thanks, Liz. Bus Dr. Litchfield, see if he wants any change in Lieutenant Riker's sedation. a cop, Sam. Are you sure? <clears throat> it was dark, but I could see his silhouette. It was a cop. 25 years in the force, I walked right into it. Why? I got a phone call. Said he had some evidence on these guys on the take. Suckered right into it. Well... At least you're still alive. That's his fault, not mine. Leonard, you'll have to wait outside now. Nurse Hyatt, nurse Hyatt, nurse How much you can accomplish around here, Webster? Riker's in good shape, all things considered, so why don't you head for home? Well, I'm glad to hear it, but it's you I want to talk to. Be brief. Okay. I want to know what evidence you've got that I've done something wrong. Riker didn't have the authority to show me. You do, brief enough. I didn't say we had any evidence. But an allegation has been made. Who made the allegation and how? 
We got a letter unsigned. I'd like to see the letter. All right. I have a photocopy here. I guess it won't hurt to let you take a look at it. So it's tied up with Riker's shooting anyway. There you are. Letters are phoning you ought to have known it. Now, how should I ought to have known it? The guy's mad, right? He's being leaned on by a dirty, crooked cop who's bleeding him for everything, right? He hates this dirty, crooked cop more than anything, right? So? He didn't call me colored. He didn't call me negro. He didn't call me black. He didn't even call me nigger. This Terry Webster's white. I know it. I feel it. Believe it. Willie, how about you? Oh, uh, no thanks. The last yeah. time I had this much coffee was at one of those fraternity bull sessions. You know where you solve the secrets of the universe? Yeah. Did you solve any? Well, we figured out how to revamp the secret handshake. Okay. Let's go over what we got again. There's got to be a way to make what Terry found out work for us. Yeah, but what did I get? That the guy is white? Yeah, and Monroe's matching descriptions of those two other shakedowns with Ellison and Ross. The guy was white there, too. Well, what do you know about the real Ellison, the real Ross? Only that they don't match the description. Well, there's another thing we know. They both went to the academy with us. Maybe... Maybe the guy has it in for us. Specifically us. Our class. That would fit if he's the one who called Riker and shot him. But didn't kill him. Didn't want to kill him, maybe. Yeah. If you're gonna try and murder someone, would you stand where he could be seen in uniform? And use a service revolver? So you mean... The guy was advertising the fact that he's a policeman. No. Too easy. The uniform is as phony as he is. Well, if he's not a cop, then what is he? If Lieutenant Monroe can get us into central records, we might be able to find out. Meaning? Well, if the guy's not a cop, how about somebody who wanted to be? No, uh-uh. Okay, uh-huh. No, I didn't know he was going to school back east. Okay, thanks. Wish him luck for us, will you? Mm-hmm. Bye. Well, that's everybody on my batch. Everyone who started with us at the academy but washed out. All accounted for? All of them. Well, that just leaves this. Applications to the force who were turned down from the start. Hey, guys, listen to this. What is it? Question. Please state any additional qualifications you have for becoming an officer in the SCPD. Answer. I come from a long line of police officers. Father, uncle, two brothers. Question. Are any relatives currently employed by the city government or the PD? Answer. Two brothers, formerly employed. Now deceased. Killed in the line of duty. Guy with that background would know police procedure. The pressure he must have felt. Why wasn't he accepted? Um, C interview. According to this, he didn't fit the new program. Flunked the psychological evaluation. Does it say why? Um, the shrink thought he was too rigid, that his mind was too closed to anything innovative. Hey, the, the guy is our age and he would have been in our class, but he was hard line as if he'd been on the force all his life. Let me see the picture. Fits. The whole thing fits. Donald Richardson. He's got a nice face. Oh, that's him, sure thing. Only he ain't here now. Did he say where he was going? No, he didn't say a word. He's never done anything suspicious? Well, uh... 
Hey, you guys. Look at this. Crackers? Yeah. I've seen this stuff before. Air Force demolition course. I found this in the bedroom. When did Richardson leave? A little while ago. Hey, what is all this stuff? Clock with the works torn out, priming wire. It's the kind of stuff they use with plastic explosives. Yeah, but where is he going to use it? What day is this year's graduation at the police academy? It's today. What happened to one of those things since I graduated? What's the procedure? Anybody remember? Yeah, they uh, have the ceremony up there in the field. The reviewing stands on the far end. Then a reception at the gymnasium. All right, so we'll concentrate our search on those two areas and the routes in between them. And the cathedral. What are you talking about? There's no church on the academy grounds. Right after the reception, there's a service by the police chaplain at St. Ambrose Cathedral. Most of the cadets and their families show up. It's right off academy property. All right, then we'll concentrate our search on three areas. Now, right, here's what I want you to do. There'll be five men assigned to... Excuse me. Yeah. All set? The ground's cleared? All cleared. All right, then I'm ready. All right. Come on, tighten up, men. Come on, come on. Come on. Now, this is Sergeant Christopher of the bomb squad. He's the expert. I want you to listen to everything he says and don't deviate from it in any manner. The device is one that utilizes dynamite. It'll have some size to it. Not huge, but maybe like a shoebox, that kind of thing. If you see anything that looks out of place with that kind of bulk to it, back off at once and blow three times on your whistle. Don't touch it, don't try to disarm it. That's for me and my guys. If you want any help or advice, don't use your radio to get in touch. Depending on what kind of detonator the thing has, a radio wave might accidentally set it off. How's everybody clear on that? All right, you all know the areas you've been assigned to. There'll be five men to each senior officer. Let's move out and good luck. Hold it, Webster, just hold it. You're unarmed, I don't want you to get hurt. Lieutenant, now look, this character already nailed Riker. I don't want to have to explain to Riker how I let this guy nail one of his rookies, too. So you just... Just hold back. Two men work that area. I want these grounds checked very carefully. All right, you two come with me. Hold it. One goes this way and one goes that way. been on the bomb squad? About two ulcers and a mild coronary. Mike, come here, quick. Athletic field, sir. It's over there under the stairs. All right, get back and get under cover, all of you, and stay put till I say otherwise. Go on. Go on, get under cover, all of you.
One, what he tells his kid when he asks, what do you do for a living, Daddy? Anybody want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Let's continue the search. Look, Lieutenant, I've got over 300 people out there waiting for this graduation. Well, we checked the cathedral is clean. You can put some of the people in there. All right, I'll do it myself. Let's check that gym one more time. Double checking. Wanted to make sure we didn't overlook anything. Yeah, well, Lieutenant Monroe said he wanted to see you. You tell him I'll be right along. I'm just going to check out a few more nooks and crannies up here. Well, I'll give him the word.
I'm really sorry you came in here. I really am. Now move. Over there. Officer Webster? Or is it Richardson now? Or it should be Officer Richardson. Move over there. Now you listen to me, man. This isn't gonna... You wouldn't want to upset things, would you? All I have left to do is to connect this wire to the timer. And you and I can walk right out of here. See, I didn't want to hurt you. Over there. What about the people that are coming for the service? You're willing to kill them, right? And a lot of them are cops, just like your brothers. No. No, that's a lie. They're not like my brothers. None of them are like my brothers or my pop. They think a cop's got to be different. Well, that's a lie. Don't you understand that? Don't you see? Hey, no, man, I don't. But maybe if you help me, I can... It's that new breed they're talking about. That means my brothers were all bad. That means that every man in my family, they weren't good cops, but they were, they were. Look, I don't doubt it. I'm sure they were good men. Look, no one is trying to dishonor what they did. I was the best. My pop told me I was the best. Because I know all about being a cop. A guy robs you, just throw him in a slammer. A guy kills you, kill him. What's wrong with that? That's not the point. Oh, that's the only point. You're good, all of you are good, and my brothers are bad? So that's why you set off to show that the reverse is true, huh? Yeah. And I did, too. And I'm going to keep that bunch from going out there and ruining everything all over. Richardson, you're not responsible for what you're doing. Oh, yes, I am. See, that's the difference between us. I know a man's responsible for whatever he does. That's gonna make you responsible for a lot of lives when that bomb goes off. Somebody's gotta pay. All I was raised for was being a cop. All I ever dreamed about or worked for. Well, it's dead now, that whole dream. What difference does it make when, when Elton dies or who? It makes a big difference to them, to those who care for them. They're our brothers. Why didn't you let me be what I had to be? Got some cups in my belt if you want to use them.
Now, Webster, you're still not Superman. Yeah, I know. Captain Marvel, maybe, but not Superman. <laughs> Come in. Well, if it isn't the super sleuths, come in. Come on in. Now, tell me the truth. Truth? Truth about what? You're really here to be congratulated, aren't you? Well, now that you mention it. Uh, you must be feeling pretty smart, all three of you. You have everything pegged, nothing more to learn about police work. Well, thank you very much, Lieutenant. Well, that's not what I meant, Officer Gillis. Oh, sorry, sir. No, no, no. Richardson is getting the psychiatric treatment he needs. Even I didn't get killed. The three of you did a pretty fair job, all things considered. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Afternoon, Lieutenant. How are you feeling? Uh, no. No what? Uh, that's either something to punch a hole in me or pour down my throat, and either way, I'm well on the road to recovery, whatever it is. Uh, is he always this pleasant? Oh, no. This is one of his good days. There's nothing in here, Lieutenant. I was just taking it to be sterilized. Why did you stop by? Well, I came by to see my husband and my friends and to give you something to take home with you when you check out tomorrow. What's that? This. Oh, oh that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Oh. Well, you guys can just shake my hand. Mm -hmm. 